Hi, this is Brian Kim, and this is part two on how to make a perfect capsulorexis. This is a follow-up video to my first video, and you can look on my YouTube channel for that video. Now, of course, it's hard to make a perfect capsulorexis every single time. You can't compete with a femtosecond laser, but hopefully these tips will help you. So again, I always use a fixation ring, as I've discussed before. I like to do a puncture technique with the forceps. And then I like to drag down towards the subincisional space and grab the edge. And I like to go subincisional because you know you get the hard part out of the way first. And then the key is to follow the contour of your ring. And I like to stay within that ring. That ring is a six millimeter ring. I like to stay within that ring. And the other tip is to make sure that as you go around, that you pull and circumferentially and then slightly pull inwardly with every single grab and you want to grab at multiple locations and uh, again at the sub incisional part be important to uh, swing it around and this is just to show you that's a got perfect overlap it's about a 5.5 millimeter rexus the same thing mark the central cornea with the uh, the marker puncture centrally and then drag down you want to grab that edge and in addition to the pearl that i mentioned i like to especially if the pupil is fairly regular and symmetric and round i like to follow the the, the pupil and make sure that the width of my rexus that space between the pupil edge and the rexus edge remain uniform throughout the rexus. And so that's another tip. So the tip is to use the pupil as your guideline, maintain that diameter as you go across into the rexus. You can see this is a perfect 5.5 millimeter rexus, perfect overlap in a round fashion. So again, the devil's in the details, of course. When you make your corneal marking, you want to assess, again, the symmetry and roundness of that pupil. And you can say, okay, in this case, I can use that to my advantage uh, and follow that pupil uh, along as I make my rexus. This is a key. You're setting the diameter of your rexus from the beginning right here. And I'm going to maintain that diameter as I go across. And you want to imagine yourself as a geometric compass uh, pulling along, maintaining that diameter. And I'm continuing to be fully aware of the diameter as I'm going across and at making sure I don't have OBD egress making sure I don't decompress the bag. And you're trying to juggle all of these in your mind as you continue to make the rexes as you go. Again, multiple grabs, uh, pulling centrally towards the very end. You can see, again, a perfect overlap rexus for this case as well. And for me, this is a two-handed maneuver. If I was only focused on just getting it done, a one-handed Rexus would be fine, but if you really want it to be perfect, a two-handed maneuver really gives you exquisite control uh, doing the capsular rexus. Again, puncture. When you are making your maneuver, just pay attention. Bes besides the fact that when I enter, I have some OVD egress because of the, just the pressure differential. Th there really isn't much OVD egress, and that's because I'm not lifting or pushing down on the wound during the maneuver. So here you see I'm slightly kind of tilting my wrist in order to be able to get that sideways motion. And then I'm more planar and I'm just rotating and pivoting the forceps within the incision. I'm not pushing down, I'm not pushing up. And uh, I'm able to maintain nice control. Again, you're, you're pulling circumferentially, but towards the very end, you're gonna pull towards the center. And by doing that consistent motion at periodic intervals, uh, at, you know, after two or three clock hours, uh, you can see how beautiful you can get this rexus. Every single one of these has exactly five and a half millimeters of overlap. And just you want to very, make sure that you, that this is a key. When you start that rexus, you are dictating immediately the diameter of that rexus from the very beginning. And once you set that diameter, you're going to follow, again, that distance, that space between the pupil edge and the capsular rexus edge. You're going to keep that space consistent as you go around. 
And again, you really can only do that for when the pupil is fairly round and symmetrical. And so that's really the first assessment. So again, look at the rexus, perfect overlap, on this case, 5.5. Again, another beautifully round pupil, symmetric. So I can use that as a landmark when I, when I uh, begin my capsular rexus. You can already see that the pupil is very large. And because it's large, you can already kind of get an idea of what the diameter of the rexus should be based upon your marking. So all of these are clues even before you start the capsular rexus. So I, I grab, I, I puncture, go pull down, grab. And again, you see I'm, I'm setting the diameter of the capsular rexus from the very beginning. You're pulling circumferentially, and then you're pulling towards the middle just gently as you go, just very gently. Uh, again, every couple of clock hours, you're really just trying to be gentle, not pushing on the wound, not torquing on the wound uh, to prevent that egress. As soon as you have more OVD egress, the chamber will collapse. You'll lose control and you will not have a perfect capsule rectus. So again, this is another example, mark the cornea, puncture, make sure you minimize OVD egress, pull down, you're setting the diameter of the capsule rectus from the beginning as if you are a geometric compass Right here, you're setting the diameter. You're following the contour of the pupil. In this case, because it's a round and symmetric pupil, you're following the edge and maintaining the diameter, using the pupil as a guideline, maintaining that distance between the pupil and the capsular rexus, the same all throughout the maneuver, being conscientious about OBD egress, being conscientious about your pulling direction, making sure it's circumferential, making sure it's flat to the iris plane as you go. Because if you pull up, you will also cause the rexus to get out of control. So you want to make sure you maintain iris uh, plane. You can see again, perfect capsule rexus opening and diameter and overlap there. Mark, puncture, minimize OVD egress, grab that flap, setting the diameter immediately. In this case, you're using the pupil in, as a guideline because this is a perfectly round pupil maintaining that distance between the pupil edge and the rexus edge all throughout like a geometric compass, maintaining the flap with multiple regrabs, slight inward movement towards the very end, pulling within the iris plane, not lifting up, which can also cause uh, poor control with the rexus. And as you can see, again, perfect round overlap, 5.5 millimeters. Another example, this is a another round pupil, large pupil, mark the cornea, puncture mark, and uh, find that rexus edge right there, setting the diameter from the very beginning, swooping to the right, maintaining that distance between the pupil edge as well as the rexus edge, maintaining that distance all throughout like a geometric compass, multiple regrabs, swooping towards the center, towards the very end of each grab, pulling along the iris plane, not torquing the wound. Again, perfect overlap, 5.5 millimeters, 360 degrees. And this is a slightly smaller pupil, but the principle is the same. After OBD, the pupil is a little bit bigger. Mark the central cornea, puncture, drag down, find that flap edge, setting the diameter from the very beginning, follow the contour of the pupil as a guideline for your rexus, maintaining that, that distance between the rexus and the pupil the same throughout the maneuver, which will help uh, maintain that reproducibly round rexus. Again, as a geometric compass, you're going all the way around as you're doing this maneuver. Again, you can see a perfectly round capsular rexus at the very end of this case as well. And again, another example over and over again i'm just showing you multiple examples just for repetition's sake mark the central cornea again this is a perfectly round pupil symmetric well centered i can use that to add my advantage uh, puncture pull down uh, grab that edge set the diameter from the beginning you're going to follow the pupil all the way around as you do your rexus uh, maintaining the chamber minimizing OVD egress. Do not uh, push and pull on the incision. Just rotate within the incision, pivot within the, within the incision. You're following the pupil as a guideline. 
multiple grabs circumferentially, but sweeping towards the middle, uh, towards the very end of each grab and staying within the iris plane. Again, you can see that example. Another large pupil example, you can see that there is uh, good symmetry to this pupil. Again, you're gonna puncture, mark the cornea first, puncture, and uh, grab that flap. And as you grab, you are setting the diameter from the very beginning here. And uh, again, you want to set the diameter based upon your corneal marking. Uh, but once you set the diameter with your corneal marking, you can use the pupil edge to maintain that distance from your rectus edge. So again, if I didn't make that clear, you are setting the diameter because of your corneal mark, because the corneal marking will help you assess and set the diameter. The pupil uh, edge helps you maintain that distance like a geometric compass. So you can see again, perfect overlap on this case, just the same. Again, perfectly round, large pupil, mark the central cornea. I can use that pupil to my advantage. First, I'm gonna puncture, I'm gonna set the diameter based upon my corneal marking, making sure I'm within the corneal marking, which helps me to know this can be 5.5. Once I've set the corneal diameter with the corneal marking, then I'm gonna use the pupil to my advantage, the pupil edge, I'm following that and maintaining that distance between the pupil edge and the rexus edge as I go across and I'm uh, multiple pull, pulls circumferentially, but towards the middle, uh, towards the end of each pull, and uh, again, pulling within the iris plane. You can see this is a perfectly round uh, rexus. Now, this is a small pupil example. In this case, uh, you can't use the pupil as your guideline, and you do have to rely upon your corneal marking for your guideline because the pupil is not perfectly round. And so, Again, puncture, pull down, I'm going across. I have to go underneath the iris here to get to that corneal mark. And it's not obvious here on the video, but I want to assure you I'm following that corneal mark uh, under the iris uh, on that right side of the rex. And as I emerge on the left side, you can see I'm going to be uh, within the pupillary edge because I am following that corneal mark. And so in these case, cases where the pupils are smaller, asymmetric, you have to use a corneal marking as your guideline and not the pupil. Again, this is a little bit of an irregular pupil, kind of an ovalish pupil. I'm gonna use my corneal marking to set the diameter. Um, but again, unlike the cases where I have a perfectly round and symmetric pupil, I will not use the pupil as my guideline. I'll abandon the pupil as my guideline and I will use the corneal marking as my guideline as I go throughout. So as you can see, I'm going uh, around and I'm using the corneal mark, I'm trying to stay within the diameter of the corneal mark as I go around. And as I do so, again, you can see I'm not following the shape of the ovalish pupil in this case. And by doing so, this, this increases my chances of obtaining a, a round and perfect capsule rectus. And as you can see at the end of the case, this is a pretty round pupil. So again, these again are my pearls. Mark the central cornea for your guideline. This will set the diameter of your rexus from the very beginning. You can assess the size and the shape of the pupil. And if the pupil is round and symmetric and well-centered, then you can use a pupil as your guideline as you continue to create your capsular rexus, maintaining that distance between the capsular rexus edge and the pupil edge as you go around. And again, you're imagining you're like a geometric compass as you go around. Remember, if the pupil is surrounded symmetric, you can make it as a guide, the puncture technique to set the diameter for the rexus from the beginning like a compass. Do not allow OVD egress because this will cause chamber stability and you will lose control of the rexus. Pivot within the incision and multiple regrabs, pull circumferentially and pull slightly inward at the end of each pull. And remember to make sure you pull within the iris plane. Again, these are my tips for making a perfect capsular rexus I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for your kind attention.